The type of fighter, by the way, that like you get, you blast him in the face, and he's like, yes, yes, <laughs> that is. Nice. <laughs> Here we are, live from Bangkok, as the title would let you know. John Nutt. You're all about those titles. JN. John Nutt, Jonathan Adams, Mr. Nutt. Sir Nuts Nuts a lot. Bust the nut inside your eye to show you where I come from. And Hebrew Hammer, beautiful Ben Stark, live from Bangkok. Bitch. Uh, coming from uh, another condo in the sky this week. Uh, and we have another guest in the room, DJ Ick. Read Dirty Dirty, couldn't be with us. He's on the ones and twos, scritty scratching, making things happening, and getting that done. So we got Mark all the way from America. Man. America. And uh, he, you from Chicago, right? Yeah. He knows nothing about the MMA Asia scene at all, so he's just going to li listen to us babble on. And if he happens to chime in with maybe a question that one of you folks at home would have, because Maybe you're from some other place that's not the best city in the motherfucking planet. Bangkok, Bangkok Thailand. If you've never been here, tch, suck my you, dick, you bitch. Don't, you don't even know anything. You don't even know what paradise is like. You don't know. If you think you've been, like, imagine Las Vegas on Las Vegas. You know what I mean? With imagine more a Las Vegas that ate a Las Vegas. And yeah. Shit it out of Las Vegas that was then eaten by a different more Las Vegas. More chins than China. Chicken in China, the Chinese chicken. Chin -na 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 I'm pretty sure that's racist. It's not, because I love China. You know I love China. I've been to the Great Wall. These are things that I do. We're expats, been here for a while. Show focusing on a little bit of expat bullshit, a whole lot of the Asian MMA scene, and. A little bit of the world MMA scene. And then a little bit of the world MMA scene. And so let's kick it off with what you want to talk about. You know, jump into the mix, jump we're, into the matter. We're going to start. Well, let, me, let, me, let me also say this. Uh, my, my father told me that I uh, curse a little too much, but realized that we like our MMA dirty, riggedy, riggedy, raw, rated R style. So uh, raw dogging it, motherfucking talk about That's MMA. Right. Now, you you want to start with bad news so we can progress with happiness? Yeah, as the exactly. show goes on. Be positive. I'm gonna people. start. I'm gonna start off with the sadness. It's just something that can't be ignored. All right. Rio Chonin has announced his retirement. Rio, I mean a journeyman if ever you had one. You know, you could say he's a journeyman, but if you look at the majority of the people he's fought, or at least the ones he's lost to, you're talking about the elite of the elite. If not now, if not at ever, time. then of the time. Exactly, but in the Asian MMA scene, he's a journeyman. Come on now. Give it Tw to man, 21 and 13. 21 and 13. That's still 21 and 13. And he's fought who's who's, though, like you said. Now, keep in mind, who is, who is he beaten? Huh? Uh, give it to us. Huh? Benny, you know who he's beaten? He was the first one to stop the Anderson Silva victory streak. Right. With a flying... Spider. It's Anderson the Spider. ...heel hook. Yes. Okay. Not only did he beat who is possibly one of the best fighters in all of history, he was getting his ass stomped out for like two and a half rounds, the ten minute round, the five minute round, and going... I can't even remember if Prime had a second five minute round in this particular event, if it was tournament or not. But with like a minute left, did like a plant, like a skateboarding plant, his hand on the ground, jumped his legs up, scissor, like a, the illegal judo scissor takedown, into a heel hook, a reverse heel hook. If you haven't seen it, you're not a fan of MMA. Yeah, man. So, big. obviously, you need to Google that shit. JP, our technical genius, will Can put you fit it, it in between right my hands so I don't look like a dummy? There. Thanks. But aside from that, yo, he's, he, like, I've actually seen, he did a little documentary about, like, what if he fought Anderson Silva now? That's another good one to check out. Um, he keeps it real, and so he, he he, he's saying that it's also his retirement. He's saying it's his retirement. It's his retirement, and he's going to be fighting Dan Hornbuckle for the deep 170 pound title. Which, one, Hornbuckle is not an easy fight. If you remember the, the Bellator tournament, he made it to the finals, lost to Ben Askren. Right. And I think it was the first or Andrew second Russell. Bellator tournament. Ben Askren mm -hmm. makes Arona look like an active fighter. Right. Ben Askren is the king of the thigh humping. Now, granted, King he of the is thigh he is a bad motherfucker. He didn't he win the Olympics? Yes, and he also got on somebody's back and chanted USA recently and did yeah. the whole dance thing. And he's a badass. He's a beast. 
whenever there isn't punching involved. Right, when he yeah, But yeah. apparently he's been working on a stand-up, and that's awesome. I know he's been spending a lot of time with Jake Shields. Yeah. Surely will help his submission game, and that's awesome. But let's be honest, possibly the most boring human being I've ever watched fight. Right. And, you know, he's been... And we like our fights raw, so let's just move off of that topic. Right. On to Dan Hornbuckle, who he beat for the Bellator tournament. Dan Hornbuckle is an exciting, explosive, chance-taking motherfucker. He's a, he's a proud uh, American Indian, of which his tribe I'm not 100% sure, and I wouldn't want to get it wrong and thusly possibly get myself uh, punched in the face. Made lacrosse. Uh, very much a warrior Educated. tribe. Wears on his shoulder, comes out. I've seen him come out in, like, in, in you know garb or attire. He will be fighting Rio Chonin. This will be awesome. And the beautiful thing about it, Ben and I have uh, mentioned it before, uh, if, he, if Rio Chonin want, wins and he actually sticks to retiring, well, actually sticks to retiring, out. Yeah. he goes out on, on top. top. He goes out, on, out with the belt. He can't even go out even more on topper. You yes. can't top. The, the gold says it all. is a gamer. Gold so he can't be played her. You know what I mean? Can't do it. It's true. We're drinking green drank over here. Get that grizzle. On an expat note, know what to do with Sang Song. Know what to do with Sang Song, Thailand. If you're in Thailand and you drink Sang Song, put it with that S. Green, I know green you, I know soda. You think it's and lime, it is delicious. but it is not. It's like Ecto Cooler. Yeah. Ecto Cooler, fucking that's Sang, so Yeah, good. we're drinking it. Yeah, I exactly. say Ecto Cooler, bitches. <laughs> we saved it from the 90s. It doesn't go bad. Yes, exactly. We're old like that. Ah. I'm old we, we have an orange drink too. It's called Tang. You should know about that. It was on the spaceship, like bitch. Right. All the way to Mars. Red rocks. You hating us? You hey, know about spaceships? If you're not, if you turned off the video of this portion of the uh, show, this is, this would be a good one for you. Remember, it's a vlogcast, webcast. It's the interweb. Internet. Uh, be a part of it. Be a part of it. Toss your loads. You know what I mean. This past Shut. week. Pro FC in Taiwan held their eighth event. Awesome. Give, now give this, me more, Ben. This is based in Asia, but since we're based in Thailand and they had a bunch of fights in the card, we're going to focus on the locals, maybe on people that we know. Who, yeah, so who was on that card? On Pictures. this card, you had Will the Kill Choke. Will the Kill Choke? Who's jumped all over Asia, if I'm not wrong, the but has, done, has spent quite a bit of time here. If, 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 if any of you guys don't know Will Choke, that are like Americans and you're, you're from the, so here's one for you. I'll just give a little forward on who Will, Will the Kill Chope is because he fought in D.A.R.E., uh, which is the organization that I work for and, and you know, kick it with. That's who I'm down with. That's why I'm It's my city. BKK. Um, Will the Kill awesome. fought for us. Um, and when he fought for us the, the, his first time, he wasn't really proven, but the kid was like 19 years old. Now, here's the thing I heard about Will. Will moved to Thailand and started training to fight in Thailand. He didn't train before. Right. He came here and started and took his first fight on like six weeks notice. Yeah. And over the last three years has gone 19, or now 20 and 9. He basically took like 20 fights in a year. He like was, ta he was taking like whatever he could. Yeah. You know what I mean? He Some, fought 50 times. To the point where like organizations were, you know, like, oh, well, you know what I mean? But he, he, he did and he, I mean, he turned. He won 50 times in 2012. Exactly. If you so include 50, 50 times in Muay Thai, Muay Thai, K1 rules, Sambo, everything. Because the dude takes challenges. And, and tries to improve what he's doing on, on everything. Kid's mad young, uh, years old. lots of respect for him. Um, yeah, crazy talk. He won his pro FC That's fight. what he does, for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Very quickly, with the guillotine. Who else was on that, though? To sleep. Then, based in Phuket, Thailand, at the Tiger Muay Thai, a very, very awesome gym that I like quite a bit. We'll talk about that later. You had Kai, I'm not going to say his whole name. It's a really long Kiwi name. Okay. Kai, 135 pounds. He won with a spectacular head kick. It was a good, pretty even fight. You know, it was if you can yeah, get of video yeah. of Pro FC, I strongly suggest you watch it. There's a clip of his KO that's been floating around, you know, the Facebook circles he's in. Awesome. Highlight reel Great. head kick KO. From a kid who's primarily like a, a freestyle wrestler. Good dear. Looked awesome. <laughs> there was also Matt Tipa, or T Pay, I'm not sure. Tipay, I think. He is uh, actually one of the guys who won the uh, Tiger Muay Thai MMA team scholarship sponsorship. Uh, yeah, he tried out, thing. after having stayed there for like six months, not the most refined, came in there green. I think never having trained previously um, was, I, I would say, 
behind on the scorecards. Okay. But there was a race up the top of Big Buddha. And they said, hey, whoever wins this, because it was the last day of the camp. It was like, Racing up Big Buddha is, by the way, like walking up 300 Shaolin stairs. You know what I mean? You're, yeah, it is you're, unbelievably you're, inclined. Going up Big Buddha, for people that haven't been to Thailand, it is kind of what it sounds like. You're going up to Big Buddha. Yeah. Right? It, it's I mean, a, you're, you're, you've never been down there, but doesn't that sound like a run up to Big Buddha? Would it's be a five kilometer shit? mountain run. <laughs> yeah. And in all you know honesty, I, mean? I drove up this in you a You know truck. about stadium running. In all honesty, half of this mountain can you almost have to do running on your hands and feet because it's such a crazy grade. Right. It's so steep. It's so steep. You're on your hands and feet. Yeah, that's bad. It's ridiculous. Kobe P has one that it literally is. It's a, uh, there's a 365, and then you've got the path up to, yeah, exactly. The viewpoint. The viewpoint. And um, that's one of the best. Uh, Maya Bay, where the beach was filmed. Educate yourselves on the world, people. Travel and come to Thailand. And go to one of the be most beautiful places in the world. Kobe B, Kobe Bay. Monsoon season, lightning going on outside. Scary. Uh, Matty Pay fought and uh, Turk fought on that card. He did. Matty Pay won by DQ because the guy didn't even have on the floor. We'll get past that. Turk, the Pitbull, Gokhan. I'm not gonna try his last name because it'll be insulting. Right. I'm gonna refer to him as Turk or the Turk though. Yes. He fought uh, the Korean Sok Moo Kim. Uh, very in a very tough game fight. Turk won on the decision. Uh, I believe it was close, but known that Turk would win. I, of course, haven't seen the fight because it's hard to get footage from a lot of places around here. Right, right in to what? To uh, Turk fighting for Dare this Dare October 12th. Dare Sports. He'll be, on our, he'll be on our card. So uh, uh, you heard it here kind of first-ish. On this podcast, that big Turk will be up on it. We we saw it in a uh, article. Give give to who, who the, is this? The article is on Fight News Australia. Fight News Australia. Pro big up to you guys. Big up to you guys. Big up to the Fight Nation. All the rest of the ones that are gonna come at the end. Yes. Fight Sports Asia, MMA in Asia. You know who you are. Get it all done. So Turk is hitting Dare. So he's gonna hit Dare. On apparently. a one fight win streak. I, I hadn't even, the, 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 I wasn't even given permission to do this. You found this, right? I found this. It was right. on the website, so we called it home so and said, it hey, it's already leaked, and they're like, put it out there. Put it out there. So. Big Turk coming off a big win in Taipei. Yep, he's going to be awesome fighting for Dan. That's huge news, and uh, uh, we haven't listed his opponent yet, but obviously that's very exciting. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Fireworks. October 12th, here. that's going to be retarded. Uh, the, other, the other one that got released on that note this week is Razul. Yeah. Uh, which you said you didn't know about. Nostrovia. Nostrovia for all my Russian friends out there. Nostrovia. From all our Russian friends, like us, share us, whatever it is, but uh, Nostrovia is fighting for us. Coming out of Dagestan, uh, hardcore motherfucking place. Uh, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. That's another part of the world that you need to do. Uh, I, vis boy. I visited it when I was traveling on the Trans-Siberian Railroad. You, in you 2005, that? yes, I, I did the trans Are you Bert Kreischer? Huh? No, Bert I'm not. What? Just talking about. If you don't know about Bert Kreischer, look up the machine. Oh, the Bert machine. Kreischer, the machine. I have more stories like that. I've told you. You do. We can get on with. I got mad Russian stories. We should have like a machine. I was day. I, I was in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, for the 400th anniversary of Genghis Khan's death. I said Genghis. You might think it was Genghis. It's not. I was, grew up thinking that it was Genghis too. That's what all my teachers told me. And then I, I realized that when I was in Ulaanbaatar. The fucking capital for Genghis Khan's national birthday. I gotta learn when the people said no. What are you talking about, Genghis Khan? You're straight wrong. It's Genghis Khan. This is Genghis Khan vodka. Genghis Khan's our national hero. Drink up. Let's go. It. Let's do some horse racing. Let's do some archery and let's do some rustling. That's their man's man fucking. Uh, yes, yeah, straight and let's up, keep dude. In mind, these are people that, with, when they ran out of food, they would drain blood from their horses' necks and drink them to so to hardcore them. human beings. You don't know human shit. If, yeah, yeah. You don't know shit about tough. So, you've been so Nostrovia, yeah, exactly. Nostrovia is fighting for us, and uh, and look them up. Uh, big up to Phuket Top Team for uh, being part of that. Big up to both those camps, uh, Tiger Muay Thai and Phuket Top Team down there in Phuket, Thailand. If you're going to come to Thailand, make sure you go to, down to Phuket. Make sure you also check out the rest of it. Obviously, there's fantastic camps all over Southeast Asia. We'll get uh, more into that later. Uh, but uh, Razul, man, Google this kid. Because this is what I'm going to say. We're, he comes from a fucked up background. 
and we're aside from me talking about this right now I'm not going to really discuss it from after this. I'm going to help that kid. He had a real fucked up situation that happened to him. Oh, was he the guy Lot who was got arrested with the murder and shit? Yes. Did you not know about this? I, I read the article. I didn't realize it was him. So this is a kid that was signed to Bellator. Bellator is like the number two organization kind of in the world in a lot of people's minds. It's like UFC and then Bellator. So if you, if you were to do this, this kid was signed to Bellator. And he's like... He's a Russian combat champion, like repping Russia to the fullest. Are you with me? USSR, on the, no, but Russia on the back, you know what I mean? He's, he's getting red, 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 mother Russia. Uh, and anyway, yeah, he basically, he comes from Dagestan. Apparently from what I know, they're treated differently as to Moscow people, but this dude's still like very fucking, he's got pride, that's why we want Nostrovia. You know what I mean? Nostrovia means cheers and good luck, well off, salute. In Russia, Nostrovia. And this fucking kid apparently uh, signed to Bellator, was basically celebrating. It was a few like off of that. And uh, there's a documentary, go check it out. Puget Top Team did it, said it right here. Um, and uh, that's like, because it's the last I kind of want to talk about because he did open hand slapped a kid outside a club that was talking shit. Kid fell down, hit his head on the curb. Apparently spent four days in a coma before dying. Homeboy did like two years for manslaughter and got out and this is gonna be his fight. You know what I mean? This is him trying to get back. And that's the thing, like uh, apparently, you know, uh, I saw uh, Big James Goiter tweeted something about it and like how like a lot of other organizations, that's Combat Asia, you know, how a lot of other organizations might overlook the dude because of that, the criminal past. And Dare is actually willing to like, basically he wants to put it behind him let the dude get a new step, you know what I mean? Because of like bad PR or something? The dude is, I've drank with him, and like I met him through Eric Gerber, black belts, you know, Eric Gerber, you know, big up for them. But uh, I, I drank with the kid, the kid is the nicest, you know, he's a, he's a party boy. He's a, he's a, he's a fun loving, fun loving, not hurting anybody, humble, super humble fighter. The type of fighter, by the way, that like you get, you blast him in the face, and he's like, yeah. Yes, that is nice. This reminds me of when I wrestled there. And I, I mount you like horse. Like horse. After fight, he, you will be my girlfriend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, he's, he's hardcore. So check him the fuck out. But uh, big ups to... I'm, I'm, I'm excited that Derek got him on board with this fight. And I'm excited uh, for October 12th. The countdown has begun. Look at those countdown photos and share them up. Nostrovia. Nostrovia. Big up to you, big guy. Or big smaller up to you, PTT. Guy. Or smaller guy. 61 kilo guy. Yeah, man. Who's, who's going to step guy. in to fight that dude? We'll see. We'll see what happens. They better be dangerous. They better be super dangerous. Go, go, Ben. So we're, so we're we speaking about the fight cards. Let's go to our uh, our neighbors, I believe, to the south yep. of Singapore. Okay. Finally dropped the complete 1FC card, which will be headlined, of course, by Thailand's own. Andrew Leone. Andrew Leone. Going up, team again. going up against Shinichi Kojima. Now, uh, Leone wasn't a last minute replacement, but he wasn't the first pick. Something happened, someone got injured, and uh, Leone came in, you know, a couple weeks ago to take this fight. He will be headlining. This could be amazing for Leone, or just another notch in the belt for Kojima. Kojima has a, almost double the record as Leone, if I remember correctly. But Leone is a, is a hard up and comer, hungry as shit, tough guy. You know how I feel about this. Uh, can't say it enough. Leone brothers are, are fantastic. Uh, this one, one headline in one FC. The other one being uh, in the Bellator finals of that bantamweight right there, Anthony Leone. Yeah, I mean, you know. Uh, we also have from PTT Tommy. If you know him, his name is Yang Sung Ho from Korea. Right. Moved out to Phuket to uh, you know delve more into. A culture that is solely based around violence and fighting. College boy. So started off at Tiger, went over to PTT after after a bit with uh, with his boy Ray. He will be fighting <coughs> Carlos Fodor, who's from America. I personally don't know much about him, but with a name like Fodor, though it's not Fedor, it's close, and people might get confused. You're gonna have a name to look up. Right. We we we, we talked about this uh, one FC card on our last podcast, yes, we did. and we'll obviously talk about it as we come up to it. And, and we'll learn more about these guys, I guess, 
Uh, but la you know, last week I kind of mentioned that this is one of the, I don't know, not highlight cards that they've had up to this point. I guess that's, you know, read between the lines, put it lightly, all, all things going on. But this card, I guess, it does have more people than I knew before. Elaine, it's got a heavyweight fight mm -hmm. that I do like. That dude Elaine, the, the Panther. The, I'm just going to call him the, the Panther. Panther. Look him up. And the reason that I want you to look him up, uh, there, fight fans, is look him up because of his fight with Ramazan. Ramazan representing Rompo Jim and Team Mr. Perfect. That's a dude that, he lost to Melvin Manhoff in K1, but he's a K1 fighter. And he used to be on the circuit down in Patong when I was on the circuit down in Patong. And he then made it to K1, and I made it to the K1 of Jack Daniels. Are you with me? Like, I conquered them all. Um, but he made it to K1, like, top of, top of the, you awesome. know. And he was in that Rompo Gym collection that included, like, Jabba. And all the dudes that were on the on like the challenger with John Wayne Parr and all, you know all, all all those big boys. So uh, he got he he fought uh, Ramazan. So if he fought Ramazan, he's at that level. And now he's fighting in one FC, um, kickboxing wise, Muay Thai wise. I that's like exciting. That. Yeah, that's exciting. If you um, like to see him bang, just pray he can sprawl. Exactly. Because I'm gonna go with Muhammad Hassan, his opponent from Egyptian top team. I'm gonna say he's a wrestler. Um, the Egyptians have you don't seen him? Strike. He's super yoked out. Looks like he's a a, a dude that took a shot. He's a press to the clinch. In the squeeze ace. really hard and a shot in the ace. And uh, you say he's queer? No, um, you know what else? <laughs> anyway, uh, he's fucking Yogi McGee swole. Uh, I saw him get, I saw him get beat down in a like EFC, like uh, South the African. I actually I tried to I get in that show two years ago. I sent him some contact. And I only have four professional fights. <laughs> right. And <laughs> five, if you include the Ultimate Fighter, which somehow isn't counted as a pro, it's counted as exhibition because it's filmed for later right. at the time. And they told me, nah, you're too experienced. It's like, I have four fights, man. What the yeah. fuck? Oh, no, you're way too experienced. I'm sorry. These things happen. That's the fight game, Ben. Remember, sure. it's a business. It's the fight game. All your fans need to recognize that. All your fighters need to recognize it. Promotions, whatever it is. It's all a big game. It's like it's all a big game. game. It's why it's important. It's why you know. Now here's a question for you: If you fight in South Africa, how how seriously intent are you on making sure that there's blood work for everybody? Straight up. <laughs> Super intense. Straight up. And that's coming from dudes that live in Thailand. Yeah. That was an AIDS joke. That was a straight <laughs> up AIDS joke. Hey. And yeah. Even if it is an AIDS joke, it's still better than a War Machine's uh, rape joke that he put on Twitter, giving himself a bunch of fucking heat. I'm a f I'm fine with any of those jokes. I mean, if War Machine wants to talk some shit and do some rape jokes, you know, what's what's the best thing about fucking 28 year olds? There's 20 of them. Hello, wasn't that kind of good? Hey. No, wasn't that not good? You, you want to go home? You you hungry? Cause I'm yeah. mean, famished. You want to get out of here? Yeah, yeah, I know. Things just oh, got easy. weird. It's fucking all. I'm blue and hate sex. Little girl in my trunk. Heyo! Heyo! <laughs> See? I don't even have a car. Cause I fly planes. Bitch! It's true. It's true. By the way, I do fly planes. How do you, how do you, if we're gonna tell jokes, how do you stop a baby from crying? How do you stop a baby from crying? With an axe. Heyo! Yes! <sighs> yeah, it's just not, it's in bad taste. Everything about it is poor. But we know that. How do you stop a baby because from Because we know it's entertainment. Clothes, Coming full fucking circle. It's for fun. The fight game is a fight game. It's a business. It's a, it is what it is. So once again, recognize. Real recognize real. Real recognize real. How so we've work? been talking about what I've seen. Let's get on to something that is more of a maybe. Well, let's go on to another the other fight card that got released because I want to get big up other smaller promotions and let uh, let fans Which, who, are the, who are the hardcore underground fans know that also Ultimate Beatdown in Malaysia. Yes, sir. They they put a card out. Nick Harris is on that. Uh, so that big up to them. That's really all we need to say about yes. that. But check it out. What, was it, didn't Will the Kill fight for that? Yeah, man. Will the Kill. Joe, a bunch of people in Southeast Asia. That's another nice place if you want to start up and, and do your come up in fights in Asia. Get at them. Uh, Moy Fit down there in KL. Holla at your boy. Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Get it. Where you, sure, what else sure. you want to talk about? I was going to talk about uh, my my favorite Japanese MMA star. Okay. <laughs> Shinya Yoki. You don't like that guy. I love you so much. So much. Sarcasm. He's my favorite. Sarcasm. And by Default favorite, is. I want to see him fall downstairs. Okay. Can't stand him. Nonetheless, he uh, has been talking since earlier on this year. 
about um, going down to 145 right. from the the lightweight weight class. Exactly. He even went as far as to uh, take a practice cut, made 145 apparently quite easily. Put it up on his fucking social scale, media and shit, right? And then made his intent known to the public. However cool it might be. People that use he social could, media whores. Like it's me, true. You. It's true. However cool it might be that he could uh, move down to 145 and uh, really, you know, jump in there. He is the current lightweight champion, having just won the belt in his last fight against right. Katsuboku, exactly. who is again fighting in Jakarta against Colossus, which should be an awesome, we'll see. awesome yeah. fight. But nonetheless, he beat Boku for the belt, he got it at 155. And, and he then he's saying that he wants to go down 145, right. and like, Victor, a, like a Muppet. We all know about Muppets, they like to get fisted. Right in the bum. I'm right. pretty sure Yoki's into that. You know what I mean? Anyway, Victor Kui, Muppets, the, the CEO, fisted. the president of, of yeah. UFC, Big up to he him. Like, yeah. He doesn't seem very happy about it, and he's openly stating it, which is a move that I like. Right, exactly. He's, like he's going a little Dana White out here. Right. He's putting in the streets. Exactly. You know, he's like... Dana he's, White, got getting <laughs> super tough by Ray Sefu, but anyways, yeah. Vi this, big up to, big up to, 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 to Mr. Queen. For holding his ground yeah. a little bit. Ioki, you nuns, you won a title. This, Defend it. These are, this, right? these are two it. quotes from Victor Kui, if you give me a moment, <clears throat> provided by thefightnation.com. I know he's been talking about making a weight cut and getting down from the lightweight division, but he's a champion hasn't defended it yet. He hasn't defended it. You gotta defend your belt, motherfucker. Defend your belt, Get on son. the ball, bitch. You know? I come and take your land. I come and take your land. And then I'm gonna go take some other else's land. Somebody else is gonna creep in. No, no, no. no, no that's no, not how it happens. You gotta defend your home turf. You gotta defend the belt before you can get a new You one. gotta make seven guys give them really weird nicknames, call them the Warriors, and then get from... Manhattan to Coney Island. Come on, play it. Warriors, come out and play it. And if you can't, then you shouldn't be in the game. It's true. 30 minutes. Th 30 minutes? You guys are fucking lucky. Going hard in the paint, motherfucker. Nonetheless, Aoki, defend your belt. Don't be a bitch. Cheers. World Cheers. Series of Fighting was this past weekend, just days ago. Mm -hmm. I unfortunately have not gotten a chance to watch it because... Uh, Waiting for it to get um, put in a place where I can watch it, and then getting it to a place where I'm able to view what I've found to watch. I'd also like to say that Beautiful Ben is also literate and has many other things to do. He's a multifaceted person, and maybe he doesn't have the time to fucking see all, all the MMA in the world. You know what I mean? Maybe he's got to shoot some archery. I know I do. There actually you know was I mean? a point in time where I was such a collector, I used to download amateur MMA events from Switzerland okay. and watch them. But those times are gone. College is over. I have a fucking job. All right? right? Tighten up. Stop judging me, because you guys do this at your job, or my job is very Doosh. physical and demanding. You're Doosh. a dick. Don't look at me like that. Douchebag. So we're going to cover what I consider the names to look at for Mortal Series of Fighting. Just off quick write-ups, nothing too in-depth. Hopefully I'll get to watch it during the week. Well, let me do, well then, fuck it, it you didn't even see it, so let me just say that... that Did this, you see it? Uh, okay. I saw the Tyrone Sprung match. Uh, I saw the dude who was Limpy McGee, who got his fucking leg chopped out from underneath him and turned into a gimp. Uh, and I obviously saw the person that is an actual technically gimp, I don't mean to even actually forward it that way, but Nick Newell, who is like the fucking oh, the man, dude. the dude that doesn't oh, yeah, have yeah. a fucking hand, <coughs> and big ups to that guy. I don't know, did you know about this, the person that doesn't know about MMA? Check this shit out. Dude doesn't have a fucking hand. Doesn't, he, he was born yeah. with uh, an elbow and disease, yeah. a little bit. So he doesn't have a hand, and he's on like a eight fight win streak. He's undefeated. I do believe. He's undefeated. He's not. I, I think. Um, I worked. From, a, no, he's from Massachusetts. On like a global level. On a yeah. global level. I worked a corner. And, and, in the, and one of the major reasons, apparently, uh, and you can be the dude that mm -hmm. goes in on this, but one of the reasons that a lot of people like it is when he gets certain submissions on dudes. A lot of the times, you got to defend that by grabbing that fucking wrist. And he doesn't, hand. Have, he doesn't a have a wrist or a hand to grab. And don't awesome. Don't, Awesome! So it's like That's so cool! No, it's... Damage. If you think about one, he can't guard his face. Because he only has this. Right. But it's, he's got So he just nub. keeps his elbow really high. What's funny about that, though, and, and this is the other one, man. Right. But yeah. He's not going to stand and bang a lot. But the thing is, he does. He throws that left hook and that jab really hard. And he kicks got like a... great fucking, kick. Like a horse. But he... There's a, here's another one. Look up Baxter Humby. Anybody in the Muay Thai game? Baxter Humby right here. He's another one-armed fighter. Okay, he's a one-armed Muay Thai fighter. 
And that dude, I, I, I knew him back in L.A. when I lived in L.A. He was living in Malibu and I knew him back then. But in the he used to come to Thailand and shit. And uh, that dude can also waka, 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 waka. I mean, one-armed dudes, just because you are... It's weird. Shouldn't we be living in a day and age that we also know that determination and all the motivational shit that's on people's lame tap-out shirts, you know what I mean? Valor, motivation, honor. Substance, whatever it is. Destroy the enemy! You know what I mean? We know that it's all heart and balls. You can fall That's out close. of the game. That's close. You can, for real, for real MMA fans, you can fall out of the game. You can be at the top, and then you can have a Mark Kerr smashing machine addiction yeah. happen to you, and get and fall off and not do it. Mm-hmm. Or you can be Nick No and fucking not have a hand, but you're a badass motherfucker that's straight, staying the straight and narrow, kids. Don't do drugs and become a fucking animal and a hero. And get yeah. uh, flags. Nick, I know the Nick Nolte came, US Army uh, gave him came to shit. top team for a hot minute, a couple weeks, maybe a month. Okay. And uh, everyone that trained with him, when there were ground and pound drills going on, even and I've even heard from the guys he's fought, they don't put a glove on on the on the Long bone. Down. Now there's no fat and no muscle covering this bone. And it's a bone. It's just a really sharp bone that sticks out past. If you watch this fight from the XFC, he, the not only will you bone. see me in the background. But you'll see this dude hit a takedown, stand over in the guard, and just wing the, the I don't want to be rude, the chicken wing. He was winging the wing and smashed dude at the end. Right. And homeboy was loopy. Because this is... Because it's a fucking like, bone. Even, even when you throw the elbow, you got to hit it right at the perfect end. I always wondered why they didn't... I always... I, I wondered this actually. Throw it out there. Throw some comments down below when you're sharing this shit or whatever. Why Why, why, why they would they put a fucking little, little glove up on stay. there? Huh? Um, it won't stay. Because oh, straight up his reverse elbow that he's actually done, you you see it hit people and they look like oh. they like it's shocking. You okay. know what I mean? Like it wasn't familiar? just a slap. That was like a full. Are you familiar with Kyle Maynard, the guy with no arms and no legs? And no legs. Who was a state level wrestler? Kyle Maynard. There's a bunch of guys out there, no legs, no arm, no problems, no type of, type of dudes, but yeah. that guy, Count Kyle Maynard, yes. Bad. Raping people like prison sex. Undefeated high school wrestling. High school wrestling. No arms, no legs. Because no one like teaches them to do that. Well, well I, it's by the way, if I didn't have any arms and legs, I'd be like, fuck all of you too. Yeah. I'm obviously not even in your realm. Yeah. I'm like a midget. I'm a person that, once again, has my own right. realm. He, this is where I live, and it's my world. Now, Maynard you know? had an MMA fight, and it was nearly canceled because he, like, he, has no, he has no hands, he has no arms. He's got like up to his elbow just about. And the same thing, that elbow does not have this meat and, and you know fat that we have on it. It's just a bone that sticks out. I have friends who trained with him back in the day, they're like, that shit is the most painful thing. Now keep in mind, not only does Kyle Maynard not have fat covering this up, he also holds like eight Georgia State powerlifting records. Right. This is not a weak kid. Yeah. So when this fucking bone stem is being spiked at your head, it's a bad fucking day. So let's bring up this. Who has more balls? The dude that doesn't fight him or the dude that fights him? Yeah. It's a lose-lose for the guy who fights him. Either you, lose either you dude beat up a kid with no arms and legs or you, or you, lost. you lost to a kid with no arms no and legs. legs. Now, as you lost, you can be like, you know, I, was just, I was just doing the good deed. But if you watch that kid's wrestling matches, grappling matches, there's no good deed going on there. That's your ass getting fucking choked out. And I mean, straight up. I know what I would do, by the way. I know what I would do because I've done it before. Teep. Me? Teep. No, man. My dad taught me this. My dad lives in Montana. Big ups to my father again. He lives in Montana. You know, Go parents! It's hunting and fishing preserve, archery, and horses, and shit like that. Ted Nugent. And he there. raised dogs. And if a dog, once again, you know, if that happens, you got to break that bone. So if the dog's grabbing and it's coming at you, you got to grab those legs, pop that, break that bone, put the dog down. That's what happens. So, Don't know if you guys knew that. So you're saying that if you yeah, so were born with only one arm, you would pop your arms out and break your rib cage? <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying, pretty much. Saying that if I was fighting a dude with no fucking... If me, if I was fighting a dude with no arms... You would euthanize would him like a king. grab him. Yeah, exactly. He's like coming at me with on, on nubs. I grab nub here, nub here. But the thing, right is, the thing is, look, put I can, right down. Put I can down. do that with sorry. my arm. Just say sorry. But, and then try well, to wait, no, but up. like, look at, look at my That's arms. How I, I can open them. This is not gonna break yes. my chest. No, no, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You never. <laughs> no, but a dog it. has. Shoulders He's obviously never melted. 
Dog's exactly. like this. I'm like this. Good I can Lord, do that. Dude. Whatever. On WSOF or just leave it with Spawn because he's the name. Leave it with that. Leave it with the Spawn because leave it with the Spawn because that's the name. And uh, lots of people in Australia obviously know this, but he's fighting uh, Corbett, Nathan Carnage. Uh, uh, other Carnage? people in the state, if, if you guys don't know who Carnage, Carnage is, he's fighting Carnage. And K, like K1 Muay Thai, Spawn versus Carnage is one of the biggest fucking fights. That's, wait, wait, uh, are I they think. fighting K1 or are they? I fighting believe Muay they're fighting Muay Thai. Okay, because Carnage is known for, for the Muay fucking Thai. elbows for the, full, full, for the fall deal. His I don't know that though. Look that up. From what I hear. Google that shit. It's Googleable. I will. Yeah, we'll it. I will. And while we're doing that, we'll, we'll stay on the K1 Google. range. Who is just signed to a long-term contract oh, by K1? Hold on. Go back to the WSFO though, because because Spawn, the dude that he fought, Angel, whatever his name is. Yeah. Bro, he took a fucking. That beating. dude just. Yeah. Uh, 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 I would overall say that me personally. Disappointed by Tyler Spong. Super excited for the Carnage thing. Disappointed by this past one. Wanted him to finish it. Probably everybody did. Um, I got more excited because the other dude was a fucking manimal. That dude did not look like he should have even been really in the cage with him past the second round and then stayed through all three rounds and really like had some times where he fucking came at it over the top style. Turned the hat around. I heard he could barely I'm a walk. machine. You know what I mean? I'm a I heard, truck. I heard he could barely walk. Oh man, I bet he can barely walk. I don't um, want Tyrone Spawn King. Alright, well yeah, so we're, we're, we're boiling it down here, remember. Did you want to talk about the uh, Yahoo Sports coverage? If for no other reason than Yahoo Sports covering an Asian MMA fighter is pretty massive. Okay, what's that about? Yahoo Sports covered Jake Butler. Yeah, okay. Evolve Fight Team. He was a, a Princeton grad, worked on Wall Street, and goes, you know, I just have an emptiness within myself. And I'm going to stop working on Wall Street. Right. And move to Asia right. and fight MMA. Yes. Did you? You're you're from well off. Uh, you, which college did you go to? Providence. Providence College. Providence. So he know he knows these places. So this kid went to Princeton. Jake Butler, uh, fighting light heavyweight. Princeton wrestling didn't apparently do the things that he like wanted to succeed and whatever. But he, he took a job on Wall Street and was making like bank. You know who who I mean? bust doing doing that thing. Spent like three years and then quit to become an MMA fighter. Now the weird one on this is there's so many people that read this article and this type of story, which I think inspiring. is a good story, like to the point where we're plugging it. You know what I mean? But it's like they think it's inspiring. It's weird because I never find I don't really find it that inspiring. Aside from not finding it that inspiring, it's one of those things where it's like he's the dude that quit the job where he made a bunch of money to become a fighter. People are like, oh, that's so difficult. No, what are you talking about? He probably made a whole bunch of money. He's obviously smart enough. He went to fucking Princeton that he can take care of himself. You know what I mean? He's, he a, he's a man's man. I'm sure he knows how to invest. I bet he's fucking a man. He has a broker. He's a beast, probably. You know what I mean? And the brain-wise, if he went to fucking Princeton. So, like, giving it up, I had to give up the, uh, oh, what did you have to give up? The 16-hour work week? You know, the the, the, the 16-hour days of the 420-hour work week? You know what I mean? You know, I, like, what did you have to give up? That fucking, nah. Uh, right? No. What's your opinion? You, you yeah. Know, I mean, it's it's. You work on Wall Street. I don't actually. No, you okay. do. Uh, you I can do. say you do if you want. No, no, I don't. Uh, You're a prostitute yeah. in Texas. Where? Yeah, exactly. Where? Yeah. What a sweet. If you guys want some go, man go, okay. in Texas, no, I mean a lot of people can think it's comfortable. You have a lot of money. It's easy to just like go the easy route. But I don't really know exactly again a lot about the MMA, and I'm sure if you go to the top. There's a lot of money involved. And that's why it's glorious, though. Yeah, right. to take a chance and to kind of do it and to follow your heart, I think a lot of people would, you know, really empathize. Really it is commendable, it. but at the same time, if you look at his pedigree and his background, he's not really taking a risk. He's probably still in his 20s, early 30s. By 34, he goes, okay. And then he just goes back to working on Wall Street yeah. and makes yeah. a fuckload of money. If at any point in time he goes, man, this my wallet's getting fucking dry, he just takes six months, right. goes back to the States, Works six months, eight months, a year, yeah. and then he's good to live in Singapore. Or maybe not Singapore, yeah. but but Thailand. You come in, you make a a Wall Street wage, like legit quarter mil. Yeah, you can live here till you're sixty. The reason I like him is because he's uh, one FC's. Um, in my opinion, if we if we if we even like talking about this dude, he's like one FC's fucking Regal. Stephen Lord Regal. Stephen Regal. Lord Stephen Regal. He's like a like the posh. You know what I mean? He'd be like the, the posh 
Facebook well, look at my hair. It's perfectly quaffed. Of, I mean, I'm probably got a lot of business Wall Street guys that probably come. Right I'm sure they come here, but they probably don't. They do. No. I mean, they do. Which, yeah. Which, which can bring us just into our last little subject, and this will be like where you can kind of, kind of go off. Yeah. Our oh, second. Like that'll be our last one. But I think we got one before. Okay, where are you gonna go? Um, what were you gonna say? I'm waiting. Give it to me, man! The ranking of the top 10 mixed martial arts training camps in Asia. Well, that's what I was saying. And that's what you're going into? Yeah, that's what I was, was kind of like just Yay! leading it into. Sorry. <laughs> I fucked up the segue. No, it wasn't a fuck. You know, come on now. It's what just that it rolls. Uh, but there, yeah, there was. And, uh, uh, you know. The top 10 rankings. We'll read them down for you. Number 10 up to number just, just, yeah. No, actually, just give them all. Give them all, and then let's give our little slice okay. of life as we live in Bangkok and we rep Asian MMA. This will also be like the tour part for you. You'll get we're better than Lonely Planets. Fuck Lonely Planets. Bunch of Ben Starks, John Nutt, way better than Lonely Planets. Bitches. Foders, if you ever did Foders, any kind of guy. Got it. You're right. Free to get in touch with me. Your guide's blow. Until you sponsor <laughs> this done. show or prove to me that your guide works, he you blow this. <laughs> yep. Nonetheless, Whoa. coming in at number 10 for the top 10 MMA fight camps in Asia. Number 10, which I think is way low scored, Tiger Muay Thai. D here, let's not even do the talking about it. Just roll through them. Ten, nine, okay, eight, seven. we have Tiger Muay Thai, Team Lakai, Phuket Top Lakai. Team, Lakai, yeah. sorry, my bad. Phuket Top Team, Korea Top Team, Yokohama Grand Slam, Team Posse, Zion Sports University, Crazy B, Busan Team, MAD, and Evolve. These are your top 10 in Thailand, or in uh, Asia, I would say. From MMAfighting.com. MMAfighting.com. Right, big up to MMAfighting.com. No, MMA Mania, sorry. MMA Mania, big up to both of you. I like both of you websites, Those are, you, you guys are cool. Yeah, You're testicles. Cool. You're well done. I enjoy you. Nonetheless, what, what are your thoughts on any of these uh, particular gyms? Personally, I only know like three or four of them. Uh, I mean, big ups to Evolve for, for being number one there. Uh, I wonder how they got big, there. Well, I mean, it, it, it is are, what it, it what is. What are their bases of crates? Well, so this is the thing. This, I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that. Super Mark. glad. Uh, I'm really happy too. Because, I, well, I, this is the thing. All Anytime you have that type of thing, it obviously is opinionated for... Wait, just who comes out of those gyms? It, you you, you go, most you go with maybe yeah. fight team? Well, because it's also, it's a gym. So, like, you know, why true fitness could be on there. Do you know what I mean? Like, like for every dude that I know that's a fighter, he might do, like, his boxing here, his jiu-jitsu there. He might, he might split up his time. He might, you know what I mean? He might be fully devoted to one camp. He might, once again, do his cardio and shit and, and strength and conditioning here while doing fitness something else. Fitness first. Something else. So why wouldn't fucking, exactly, why wouldn't maybe a fitness first or a true, or a California wow, or a 24-hour fitness. fitness. or one, Listen, 24-hour one, one. fitness, almost all the pro fighters in the world do their running at. 24-hour um, fitness is probably the best MMA team in the world. See, here you go. So it's like kind of what do you judge it by? Um, I think that the, the author probably had to go by, like you said, Fight team in Asia, who they have for coaches, maybe. Uh, active fight roster active in their fight roster. ranking or titles held. But then you gotta keep in mind, in terms of Asia, obviously there's Japan. And Japan is like one of the Mac Daddies of MMA. Like, in, you would say yeah, Valley it, Tudo started sure. in Brazil, but if you're talking about your first organized mixed fighting event, it's Shudo, formed in 1985. The UFC wasn't until 1993, you know, and Pancrase, which was back in the day, like, open palm strikes, I think was around 98 or 99. Which is where I want to jump on board and say, if you really want to go to badass fighting, though, we have you beat on all levels. Yes, sir. Thailand um, has Muay Thai as their national sport, and whatever the fighting was, I, okay, sweet, Brazil, you were going like, you know what I mean, sweet, fucking Japan, you know what I mean, we're repping BKK. Bitch. <laughs> Once again, Google it. Man, punch doesn't count for shit because it has a glove. Unless you knock the sweat and teeth off somebody's head. You have to have head. blood or like sweat flare. In Muay Thai, they don't even count because, and that's because once again, the King of England. You can go through the whole history, or uh, King, King of Thailand or went to England, found gloves, thought it was more proper. It's the education of the game. 
in a web. Do your history. Do your now, research. Now, keeping but that so, in mind, it seems that the old style is making a comeback with a hemp rope. Yep. Wrapped Kad instead of gloves. It's called Kad Shuk. Kad Shuk in Thai. Kad Shuk. It means hands wrapped in rope. You can go check them out. Uh, Max Muay Thai, Bo Cow, once again signing with K1. But this, this is all representing what, what we kind of goes back to this article from uh, MMA Mania. Um, the best gyms in Southeast Asia. Ben, ben just said he's been here for uh, a year and a month. A year and a month, and a, a lot of those camps you haven't heard of really right. in general. I've been here for like, I've been here since 2004. So you do the web, the, the math. That's I mean, I did the on and off thing. And then I did a whole lot of travel, but I've been living in Bangkok for for four, and uh, you know, living in, in Thailand for a, a little while longer and doing all that type of shit. Ben Pak Moy Tisanam Moy Pat Tong Sinemian Road. I was all that. I was a champion at Patong in fucking the heavyweight division. I had that strap for kicking that shit. So anyway, camps. Personally, if you're gonna come to Asia. If you're gonna come to Asia and you're gonna, if you're gonna come to Asia to train, you're coming here for a fucking reason. You're coming here for your striking. You're coming here for your Muay Thai. Come to Muay Thai land. Come to Thailand. Cause I mean, uh, big ups to Evolve. I think if you're in fucking Singapore, that there's a lot of camps that are good. Jugg Juggernauts all up in there. All the, all those camps. Fight G, uh, Ritual, Brad Robinson, Vanilla Gorilla, but. but, but, but and they got, and Evolve's got all those fucking champions. They got all those champions, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm fishing, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, but fucking Sit Yaw Tong, Pattaya. Sit Yaw Tong, Pattaya. What about Sit Song Pinong? That's like the best name ever. Yeah. It's up to you as a, as a fighter to get your shit done. And the, and the camps in fucking Thailand, Legacy Gym, uh, I, Borakai? Maybe, maybe we should have, yeah, Borakai, that's in the Philippines, but no, Legacy Ubon is Ubon awesome. Russia, Thai? Team Quest, Thailand, up in Chiang Mai, the Punja Butra Boys, Burn Shell, Emac. Hey, Emac Thailand, Emac, those guys are awesome. Put our link right here. I mean, there's so many fucking gyms here that are amazing. Amazing, amazing gyms. Competition-wise, it's crazy. Maximum down in Patong now has Victor Swenson, you know what I mean? Tiger Muay Thai, obviously fucking... Ebersol and Roger Huerta, you can't really do anything better. You know what I mean? I, it's, it's tough. It's tough to judge what is the actual best gym in any person's opinion. And I guess that's what it comes down to. And is that, that's an opinionated question, right? It's an opinion. I think a lot of it boils down to is how much press do you get? How big of a show are your guys in? Um, who, who, who do you know to get your name where it is? You know? Yeah, but I mean, yo, check it out. How fat is your I like to do my I like to do my stand up at one place in my that like I, I live in Bangkok. I like to rep Jitty Gym. Jitty Gym. Jitty Gym on Soy 19 and the Tough Camp in Akamai. Uh, and then I would go Emac Q23 or BKK BJJ if I was rocking the BJJ. You know what I mean? The, yes, that's what I would that and that's what, how I would roll and that's what I would do. Then I'd probably get done my 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 athletics at the fucking lab on Super Mid Soy 33 or Bangkok CrossFit. And I mean Really, once again, if, if you're the, if you're the, it depends on what you want to do. Because for Muay Thai especially, you need to build a relationship with your pad man. Yeah. You need to build a relationship with your pad man. So there are camps that I go to. For instance, like you know, that, like you, when you're down in Phuket, you might hit, head off to Tiger. I'm going straight to Don and, and I love Tiger and all the, all the guys down there are like my boys. But I, I, I fought at a pot, Patong boxing gym and a lot of the guys from Patong boxing gym non size three swim, who I know as C, but all those guys are down at Puget Top Team, so my, like my, my pad holders are there, even though mm -hmm. Terminator and those guys. So it's weird. Then you got Simbi Muay Thai, you got fucking how many Muay Thai places you got? Tons who gets like the Mecca of Muay Thai? Um, Shitloads. We can kind of finish it on that. I mean, let's wrap it up. Or but did what? you want to give a last holler to Mr. Ramba Samdet? Coming so out of bad. Thailand. Coming out of Thailand. Fighting in PXC this past weekend. If you didn't know, PXC events are free streamed. Just go to their Facebook and they have a link. Watch the event for free. Like, there's no pay per view action, and you're getting like pay per view level fights. Yeah, PXC is. I love PXC, good. and not because my my coach in my hometown might have been close with their Associate owner and whatever. got a bunch of our guys in it early on. Ours? But it's a fucking awesome show. Super high quality, great event, really nice talent. This isn't a, a, a 
preference thing because Guam is technically owned by the U.S. and I could go there and get whatever American things Polish I want. Boy. Just saying. You've never been. Once again, travel more. Mark's here. Mark, you want to, you, you can talk about this too. You need to travel more. You should travel more. Seriously. Okay. Get out, get out of the box. Get out of the box. Yeah, Unless PXC puts on high level fucking events every time. You might not know the guy's names, but watch. Trust me now. Thank me later. Watch PXC. I think you can even still get the replay for free. Get that PXC dog. That being said, Slasher. Ronka Sambet, he fought on the card. Had a very impressive, impressive fight. Bars record to 11 and 2. Go check out R Ramba Samdet. Anybody in the flyweight division around the world, the dude's at the top. If you think the boxer, was it Prince Nassim? Yeah. If you think if you thought he, was, he fun, was a dancer, if you thought he was what? He ain't got shit. Ramba oh, 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 dances more than anybody. Dude and he probably comes out of Isan. Look that place up. Isan. Oh, that, that's tough. like. Bano, bano. It means country, country. It means your house is in that fucking outside. That's rice patty. Living it's in on the stilts, so the animals Wait, can go so, with the meat. So you're here, our friend that just got here, uh, once again, you, you're here. I love, I have expats out the wazoo come and they're like, I'm going to Thailand. I want to get off the beaten path. I don't want to just do the backpacker trail and shit. It's like, yo, you don't want to do the backpacker trail? Go to Isan. You know what you're going to be able to do there? Nothing, unless you speak Thai, because you're fucking in the middle of nowhere. You can say, Singha. Oh, yeah. have, have. You can have. get Mao Mak Mak. Very, very drunk. Very, very. Yes. Chana. <laughs> Chana. Ben Stark, Hebrew Hammer. Ben Stark, HH on Twitter. Ben Stark, BJJ and MMA on Facebook. My man, John Nutt, here on Facebook. Yes, that's all I do. He doesn't post a lot. There's cool pictures, though. But check out Dare Fight Sports at darefightsports.com. Look out, your boy Turk and your man Nostrovia. Pop it up. It's, it's happening. What well, we October got on that Dare Fight Sports car? Yeah, that October 12th. We have Iron Fist. Iron Fist, Ole Larson. Ronan, Shane Wiggin, what? Turk, Turk, boy. what? Go con F Turk and little something. That and Nostrovia. 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 So we give it to you on that as an end. Now we're gonna remember. This is only a handful out of fourteen. There's more fighters coming. Dare's dropping knowledge every yep. few days. Stay tuned. Stay posted. We'll keep you up to date. Darefightsports.com. If you get impatient, big ups to Fight Nation. MMA in Asia, MMA Combat, Combat, Combat Asia, Asia, Fighting in Asia, Fighting Australia, MMA in Australia. MMA anybody that's trying to grow the game. Anybody that's trying to grow the game. Thank you very much. Arts, we love you. Butt sex love. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, put it on your social media. And uh, if you're a promoter, hit me up on Facebook. I got talent for you. Live from Bangkok, SMOD, no holler at your boy. Zero Get talent. fucked. Turn the goddamn camera off. This shit's over, son. Sexual chocolate! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Come on, don't play, son!